zoom it in. Huh? Even more? Yeah, see, it's not showing. I mean, now it's not. No? I think optical zoom is not good. You can fit it not good. Everyone's got properties. No, why? No, like, I think there's an option to see here. Preset is high, but then keep it to 10 ah, okay. Yeah, that's why. Now just see, just click OK down. Yeah. Is it better? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, now it's better. Do they want only the screen to be visible? I'm not sure. I think even guests should be visible, right? The guests want to be visible as well. Good morning, students. Are this way? The sacrifice one of them. Are you all ready for the talk? Yes, ma'am. Oh, the angle is very good. All right. So today we have a guest lecture from Dr. M. Y. Anand. I will introduce Dr. Anand to all of you, and then he will take over the stage. Dr. M. Y. Anand. Has completed his master's in 1996 in astrophysics and okay. specialization. He has done his PhD at Bangalore yeah, University under, super, yeah, under the supervision of Professor B. A. Kagali and Professor Jayant Murthy, a very renowned scientist from Indian Institute of Astrophysics in 2009. And his thesis title is A Study of Interstellar Bubbles. He worked as an assistant professor at Postgraduate Department of Physics, Center for Post-Graduation Studies in Jain University during September 2009 to September 2013. He also worked as assistant professor and coordinator at Postgraduate Department of Physics, Vijaya College since uh, September 2013 to August 2018. Presently, he is working as a senior scientific officer at Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium, Bangalore, from August 2018 till date. He is involved in various academic activities and also in science popularization programs of the planetarium. A warm welcome to Dr. Anand, sir. I looked at the time and uh, Sunday has not crossed the meridian, so I, I'm su I was sure that it is morning. So, good morning, one and all. So, on the outset, let me just tell you a few words about the uh, planetarium, what it does for general public and also students like you. Basically, we have uh, our activities are divided into two. One is academic activities, of course, it's informal or non-formal education activities that we do for high school students, graduates, undergraduates, postgraduates, whoever. And popularization program is a program for general public where the public wants to learn. Uh, the science through many media, maybe it is through the theatre shows that we conduct or the workshops that we do for them or a chart course that we do on astronomy. And uh, we are open to start many new programs, it depends upon the, uh, the uh, students who approach us and uh, if they have a requirement and if it is well within our uh, framework, definitely we are looking into that also. And if, why actually I say this because if anybody is, of you are interested in space science or astronomy, we can explore how actually we can make a course for you. Uh, we have a, a good uh, intra, uh, infrastructure facility that is coming up. So we are also associated with almost all, many of the research institute. 
in the basic sciences and also ISRO. Uh, so we can we can uh, become a bridge between the students and the these research institutes. So with these few things, let me talk about what actually I am here to talk. We are uh, interested. Uh, maybe you have heard of the space telescopes, uh, which were launched recently, like the JWST, James Webb Space Telescope, so, uh, the, and the popularization, the, the popularity that has that it has gained, right, might have uh, impacted on you, or you might have heard. Uh, heard about this, the engineering marvels of the uh, these space telescopes. Okay, so probably that has created some interest in you. Uh, so I choose to talk about the space telescopes and how actually the engineering part of the space telescopes uh, makes it more fascinating. Right, of course. The science that it is that it gives is also much more fascinating. But because you are an engineering student, I thought that it is also good that we talk about space telescopes and see how we can involve. And maybe also a little touch upon how actually the engineering students can also take up a, a career in few sense. There are ample examples, right? So we have seen many students who come to us, take an undergraduate course, weekend course that we do, and have become an astronomer, astrophysicist later. So there is a good example uh, to take up a science career or astronomy as have become an astronomer or astrophysicist um, even after you are engineering. So space telescopes has played a vital role in exploring or uh, expanding the expanding our knowledge about the universe. So we will explore with a few examples how actually it has impacted over our understanding of the universe. First, let us start the story with the story of the telescope. Right? We know that the uh, telescope was first used by Galileo for making and celestial observations. Many of us believe that uh, Galileo was the one who actually made the telescope or uh, invented the telescope for the first time, but it is not so. Uh, there was a lens maker named Shepardley and Ernst Shepardley, so he was, he was the one who actually made the telescope as per the record. Maybe uh, we have to go according to the record. So uh, Shepardley actually uh, gets the credit for making the telescope. Somehow Galileo came to know about uh, this kind of device which makes the farther side uh, uh, a very uh, uh, a shorter. So he made the telescope himself and he became popular because he was not such like any other person who just made it. Uh, made it use in a terrestrial uh, things like a warfare or a spy, uh, a spying or so on. But he turned the telescope towards the sky and that is what the remarkable, uh, the revolutionary thing that it created. Unlike others, right, probably uh, there were telescopes at that time and people might have also, there is a chance that people might have also turned their telescope towards the sky. But here, what we need to make is the, the, the seeing what Galileo made and what the others did was very much different. Galileo just did not stop at the sight of the objects in the uh, sky but he did the observation. So that is that makes the important thing. The observations that he made made him a very popular figure in a, in science and that revolutionized how we thought about the 
the universe. So the small, however, the the telescope that he made was very small, a two-inch uh, lens that he made. Through that, he could see the moon, the craters on the moon, right? Uh, until that, the moon was thought as a very perfect in nature and a beautiful object in the sky. So only after Galileo showed that that moon also has a crater's valleys and other things, people become very crazy about the things and they started and it actually become viral even though uh, it, uh, there was no social media at that time. So people in a large number they started making telescopes and started making their own observations. And also if you have, I mean on the internet I don't have uh, images of the sketches that he made. That's what the difference that, the, that uh, it made from other people. He sketched whatever that he observed right? and those sketches still are even with a, a, a bigger telescope that we have today. Right? So are the finest details that could have recorded. So he recorded the finest details of the objects that he could see through the telescope. And of course, he could also see the rings of the Saturn, but he could not make out that those are the rings of the Saturn. He could make out something, uh, something very different from the other planets. And also, one of the very fascinating thing that he observed, and one of the very very remarkable thing which actually uh, supported the uh, Copernicus model later was the uh, observation of the Jupiter moons. He observed four moons around, going around the Jupiter, which we now call it as a Galilean moon, right, named after Galileo. So, because early, why actually it becomes a very, uh, uh, very, uh, very vital example for supporting the Copernicus one year? Until then, people were thinking that everything goes around the Earth. And this was the system which showed that there is some system which is which should which is which may not have which might not be going around the arch. Okay. So later, of course, the Copernicus uh, theory was accepted because of the uh, observational explanation that it could give mainly of the uh, the retrograde motions of the planets and other things. So, uh, the telescope, yeah. that small 2 inch telescope that Galileo made revolutionized the entire world and it kindled, uh, it kindled the spirit to know more about the universe. Next. Now, we have much much bigger telescopes, uh, later actually the telescopes uh, um, were made in bigger in size. And uh, as I mentioned, the bigger telescope could identify the Saturn in carefully, and uh, the uh, astronomer Cassini was the one who actually uh, could uh, establish that it is uh, it is the ring structure that is around the planet, uh, which makes the Saturn different from other planets. But now, of course, we have we see the rings around many other planets also. So as the telescopes becomes bigger and bigger, the information that we gather about the uh, objects around us would also increase exponentially. exponentially. And the biggest telescopes that we have, right? you, of course you may know that there are two different kinds of telescopes. One is a uh, refractor telescope which are made up of lens and uh, another one is a reflector telescope which are usually made up mirrors. So the lens is difficult to make as it becomes bigger and bigger and becomes heavy also. So people uh, choose reflectors or the one mirrors instead of going for lenses. So the refract the biggest refractor telescope that we have is the 14 reflector that we have at the Earth's observatory. 
and the telescopes that uh, people have built have gone up to 10 meters, right? 10 meters, it's much, much bigger than this auditorium, okay? So, uh, from 2 inch telescope, we have reached a telescope of the size of 10 meters and this is uh, a much more bigger telescope, right? The biggest maybe uh, when it is, when it will be established completely. So it is a 30 meter telescope uh, in which the India is also a part of uh, the, and LNT is also, LNT, and Tarpo, you know, they are also contributing towards making these telescopes in giving the actuators, right? So what I am emphasizing on that is engineers have a greater role playing building this kind of telescopes. So astronomers comes to the later part of doing science, but it is the engineers who set up these kind of facilities which were dream dreamt by astronomers and it is fulfilled by engineers. So you have a very good opportunity to involve yourself into this. So actuators that they make because now the telescopes are not uh, made up of single mirrors. They are made up of multiple mirrors because the size becomes bigger, making a single mirror becomes very, very difficult. So you have multiple mirrors and in order to have a, a given shape to the entire system, you need actuators which supports them and keeps them in shape. So there are many, many other things that uh, you need a larger data transfers that you need to manage. Uh, through these telescopes and so on. So we have been the the last one here is a, a large binocular telescope, right? So the engineering has helped astronomers to look farther and farther in the uh, sky. Yes. So one of the uh, achievement that uh, astronomers could do is observing an object or an event which we call as a gamma ray burst. It's a very, very energetic event that happens probably uh, when the heavy, uh, when the massive star becomes a black hole. So the gamma ray burst that happens, uh, it's, even though it is very energetic, it happens anywhere in the uh, sky. So the latest gamma ray burst that they have detected, right, was happened at and a distance of 10 billion light years, right? So it is about, if you know a uh, few facts about the universe and astronomy, you know that the universe, right? The Big Bang theory tells that the universe has started 13.5 billion years ago. So 10 billion years, years ago means it is almost when the universe was at its end of stage. Uh, initial stages of formation. So those things are very, very, very important to know, to, which, uh, which can tell us how the matter that has formed into various forms now, how actually they were in the initial stage. So this has made possible because of the, uh, the facilities that we have now. So the uh, Galileo, what he saw, right, was the, through the small telescope and what we see through the 10 meter telescopes till now is the, is through collecting light which we call as an optical light that is the energy which makes us to see or it makes the things visible. But then we later came to know that this visible light is just a small, uh, small uh, part of the electromagnetic, a very, very larger electromagnetic spectrum. So when we came to know that there is, there are, uh, sorry, there are energies that are available, right, uh, apart from this visible uh, wavelength. So people try to explore because the more information that you get, the more information that is available for you to understand things. So, people started collecting more 
and more electromagnetic waves at other part of the spectrum and now we have astronomy done not only in optical wavelength but also in radio, in microwave, infrared, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma rays and all. So we have an, a very very huge uh, window now where which actually is available for us to understand the universe much much better than what Galileo could do or what could we do from these telescopes that we have. Of course. So can we build the can we collect all these radiations, electromagnetic radiations being on Earth? So if you look at the thing, the Earth has a very fascinating uh, it is a very fascinating system. We are very much protected by the uh, radiation and because of which the life has evolved on the earth. If you look at the uh, structure of the earth, looking at the atmosphere and how it is, you will be astonished that it is, it may, it, I mean, you, it makes us to think that maybe some brilliant thing has thought of creating such a structure. So, it is well protected from the high energetic radiation such as ultraviolet, X-rays and so on. The only radiation that we can receive being on the surface of the earth is uh, optical and the radio. So, you can do astronomy by being on the earth by collecting the radio or uh, the optical. So, if you want to collect any other electromagnetic radiation, you have to go to a higher altitude. Of course, going to a, a little higher altitude, maybe at, to the top of the hill, you can do some infrared astronomy, right? Above the clouds, you can get some infrared radiation. But you may not, you will not still get a major part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So, for that reason, you have to go out of the earth atmosphere because earth atmosphere absorbs the UV and it also doesn't allow the X-ray. So in order to uh, collect the information which are coming through the high energetic radiation such as UV, X-ray and gamma, you have to go out of the atmosphere. Of course, uh, for you, human beings and the light and the, the protective layer that we call it as an atmosphere is very very much needed but for an astronomer it is an hurdle so which has to be uh, which has to be uh, across to know more about the universe next slide so why we need to go to space of course we understood that there is a need to go to space to collect the high energetic radiation but it comes with cost. What are the costs? The extreme condition. I mean the, uh, the conditions existing there is very much different from what you have on the surface of the earth. Right? It's almost a vacuum. Right? So and the temperatures are very intense. Wherever the uh, wherever you get a, a radiation, those radiation will have an intense, uh, I mean high temperature and where you don't get, it will be at an extremely cold region. So maybe you have understood those things uh, through the Chandrayaan 3 landing. Right? So how extreme the temperatures were on the moon, so on. So the space has an extreme variation of temperature. The, the materials that you make is very much challenging. The instruments that you make becomes very challenging because they have to with the, right, withstand the extreme temperatures that it uh, undergoes. And it becomes very expensive. For example, if you want to build a telescope on the ground, maybe the biggest telescopes may cost about uh, 100 crores, maybe 50 crores or 100 crores. But 
if you think about the space of the scope and if you know how much it costed for building a JWST, right? So you will uh, you will know how expensive it is. So JWST probably cost about uh, about uh, ten billion dollars or much more, more than that. So it is a very very expensive to make a, a space telescope, and it is also time consuming. You will know. I will give an example, right? So you will come to building a telescope itself is a very very time consuming because everything you need to make. Of course, you have to upgrade your technology because replicating the telescopes they may not be useful. Of course, you may see different part of the sky, but you will be investing so much. So designing a, a te telescope. Whenever you install a new big telescope, you should see that it should have something uh, which is different from any other telescope that is existing. So it involves a building up a technology and also building up a, a new kind of material that is needed to make. So it is very very time consuming. For example, the 30 meter telescope which India is also a part may it is it started maybe about 15 to 20 years back but even then it will it may take another 10 years for it to become operational so it is very very time consuming <coughs> the ground telescope itself but think about the space telescopes so they are much much more time consuming and the radiation they have to the materials should withstand the exposure to the various harmful radiation right so they may ionize some of the material and they may make them bad within a, a fraction of a second so the radiation can also play a, a major role in harming the telescope so with all these difficulties why should we go to space okay. so this is the other telescopes which are made you just compare with the handle the telescope, the telescope that we have at Lay in the So it is remoted, remotely operated from Bangalore, right? So nobody, no astronomers goes to this telescope. There is a place near Oskote, right? So they operate the telescopes, they collect the data from here in Bangalore, right? Sitting far away, thousands of miles away from there. And it cost it costed us only 20 crores, but putting a telescope on the uh, space in the space cost about 2,000 crores. So look at the uh, the expenditure that is involved in making a space mission. Please. And there are some difficulties in doing astronomy from uh, thing. That is the quality of the observation that you can make. The, of course, bigger the telescopes and better the uh, materials that you use to make the lenses, mirrors and so on, the, you can make a good image, but there is a limit to uh, get a good image, right? Because of the condition which we call as seeing, right? So that is because of the atmosphere that is surrounding us. So, whatever however good your telescope is it there is a, a, a limit for a better seeing condition next so just to give an example how a same object looks from ground and the space you can see the details of the so why actually it happens it happens because of the refraction that the light undergoes in the upper in the atmosphere when it enters so the first rhyme that we have uh, we know twinkle twinkle little star that is because of the atmosphere right that star twinkles because of the the uh, presence of atmosphere and when the starlight passes through the atmosphere it undergoes many refraction because of which you will see that the star is twinkling Right? Without atmosphere, you might not have seen the twinkling of the star and 
the first time of your life would not have been there. So, the atmosphere which protects us also hinders us from seeing the things better outside the earth. Next slide. So, and also there is one more uh, reason for going out, out of the earth. It is to collect the radiation right from all the other parts of the spectrum. As I said, the radiation here in astronomy means the information. The more information, the more radiation that you collect, the more information you have. The more variety of radiation that you collect, or the more energy energy spectrum uh, that you can collect, the more uh, physical condition that you understand that is existing in different parts of the universe. So it is just looking at different parts of the thing and try to know put them together right, and try to know what may be the universe at a whole. So it gives us an opportunity to look at the things, collect the information from every part and every physical condition and try to figure out what may be the uh, universe as a whole. So this makes a very, very crucial things for us to make us take our telescope to the space. So this is the, the image that you see of the sun in an optical light. Right? Next. Keep going. So this is the sun in X-ray. Probably you would not have imagined uh, the sun would have, uh, might have seen like this. Next. Slide. Next. So, next question. Next. Yeah. Next. Okay. So, you, you saw how actually the sun looks differently in different regions. And the science will tell you that what are the different physical mechanisms that is happening because of which actually it looks different in different regions. So maybe it is only telling you about the outer surface. Uh, one of the wavelengths will be telling only the what is happening at the outer surface, and some wavelength may be telling you about what is happening at the hardest part of the sun, and something may be telling how it is emitting particles or the uh, the sunstorms or solar winds and so. So. Collectively, we get a very good information about the sun. If you have, if you can, if you go, if you see the sun through all the wavelength. Next. So you can see that what is visible in one wavelength may not be visible in other wavelength. Right. So we are blind, right, to all other radiation except the visible radiation. So if you say, I will understand the entire universe by looking through the visible window, then we will be fooled. We will be knowing only a very, very tiny fraction of the universe if you are only limited to optical telescopes. So we need to go to the space. So we, can, we had an ample example to show that why actually we need to go to space. So, we have a very good evidence now why we need to go to space. Yeah. So, the story of the telescopes begins with this gentleman and the astronomer, astrophysical, Lyman, Sir Lyman Spitzer. He was the one who first, maybe, of course, uh, we should give credit to others also, but he was the one who took a, a, a logical step towards realizing the dream. So he was the one who dreamed to take the telescope to the space. He was knowing what was the uh, what was the hurdle that the atmosphere uh, put forward 
doing astronomy. So he wanted to take telescope to the space. And it was as early as 1946, he proposed putting an observatory in the space. So it started with all this paper, right? So if you are interested, you can go through this and you can know more, much more interesting. So it's, it's always influencing and motivating when you know what was the challenges that these people faced. Dreaming is different and making a dream to its, taking it to a logical end is an another thing. So you have to know this motivational uh, work of the great people how, uh, what were the challenges that they had and how? So, next slide please. The challenges was many things. We were not able to put anything in space. Right? We were not knowing how to put a telescope or how to put a small object in a space and control them. And at do, even during that, that time, it dreamt of putting a telescope in the space. So, in, only in 1957, on October 4th, October 4th, we celebrate the World Space Week, right? To commemorate the, uh, the Sputnik, launch of Sputnik, the first satellite, uh, human built satellite, which went around the moon. Okay? So, <coughs> it happened in 1957. And the first paper of the space telescope came, came in 1946. So later, because of the uh, rivalry between the uh, USSR and the USA, uh, USA came into competition and they started making their satellites. And in the first satellite that they made was in 1958, right? so which has only a small counter, right? Uh, which was in the Giger Muller counter that you use, GM counter experiment. If you have a physics student, you might have done the radiation coming from the many radioactive materials, right? So, usually you do in your lab, probably you are uh, in your lab also. So, the GM counter which detects the, the radioactive thing because radioactive was already there uh, because of the first and second world war, okay. So, people were knowing about the nuclear uh, warfare and also they were knowing about the, uh, the harmful radiation and uh, detectors and work there. So, they built and uh, they took their GM counter to the space and countered the radiation. And India made its first attempt through its Aryabhata in 1975. And you are the, one of the uh, one of the pillars who actually built our uh, institution, the Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium. Right. So, Professor you are the, was the one who actually made uh, and who dreamt about the institution where we are working. And with this guidance, we were able to make many of the uh, programs taken to public. So, uh, he was the one who conceptualized the Aryabhata and uh, the man behind the Aryabhata. So, next slide. Yeah, these are for some of the facts about if you want to go through them, you can. Otherwise, we skip them. It is to tell what are the different uh, stages where actually man started to put the different kinds of uh, detectors in the space. So we will we'll skip this and we will go to the So please go to the back. So if you want to know, there are about more than 90 space uh, missions that have been taken so far. Right? So 90 space missions. So you think about the first one. Alright? So I have not actually told you anything about that. Right? So now, after about uh, say 70 years, we have about 90 missions that have gone to space and explored 
the, the universe that is available to us and what all the we know is most of the things are contributed because of these 90 missions okay so if you want to know about them you can go to this link go to this link and you know about the all these space missions and you know many of these are located at a, some centers and managing the data that comes from these space missions are very very extensive for example a, a, a single space uh, telescope can send you about a 12 GB of data every second right every second it, it will it will send you a data of 12 GB so think about if it works for a span of 5 years what is the amount of data that it gets collected and how to retrieve the data retrieve the science from this data is again challenging that may be where actually you can uh, chip in and you can see how you can contribute towards so next so this was actually the initial the work that are that were made to make up a telescope of course it took longer time right just recently maybe three years uh, two years ago we could make this telescope so we'll come to this later so as i said we have more than 90 space telescopes now which is exploring the entire electromagnetic spectrum right and it is enriching us uh, through their uh, through their uh, information <coughs> of course i will you know, it is impossible for us uh, to go through all these missions i will just select three telescopes and we will look at these three telescopes which are uh, contributed enormously in enriching us the first one is the Hubble space telescope and this is the one we can consider as a first observatory to be placed outside the earth so it is the it's a, a size of a a, a bus a, a college bus that you usually travel right so that big telescope has been kept in kept in the space and it is used right it is controlled to look wherever you want right look at the think about how difficult to move a, 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 a object of such a big uh, thing to wherever you want and a, and to precision of what is required to make an, a good observation so Hubble space telescope was launched in uh, 1990 and it is still working that is about 23 plus 10, 33 years from last 33 years it is observing continuously and it is uh, enriching us with the information that it is giving so few details of how big it is the first telescope the Galileo telescope was just 2.4 2 inch telescope and this is about 2.4 meters anybody knows how big the telescope that we have in India, the Hanley telescope is about 2 meters in size. Okay, so roughly the similar size of the open telescope, right, that we have. So, 2.4 meter telescope, 7 feet wider telescope, the focal length is 189, 189 uh, feet, and so on. The wavelength that it can observe, it can observe through infrared, visible light, ultraviolet and majorly visible light and it has many instruments on that you can also look at how engineering takes part making an instrument is a very very crucial thing so there are many instruments here and Hubble telescopes can be compared with the same the revolution that Galileo telescope brought about Though Galilean telescope was very small, that was the first 
instant where we came to know that the universe or the celestial objects looks very differently how we thought about from how we thought about the same way Hubble changed our way of thinking what may be the universe by its observations. So the clarity that we could see, of course, in short years there were there were many difficulties. It was at at one situation, right? It was under the uh, <coughs> it was considered as a, a, a major disaster because of a, a small error that it had in the middle. There was some small uh, uh, problem with the focusing because of which the entire mission would have gone as a failure. But later, the mission was sent to space telescope and put some additional devices, uh, uh, optical things, so that they corrected the image quality of the image that they got through the other telescope. After that, the in images that Abad provided were astonishing, mind blowing and people or astronomers never imagined that the objects could see in such a detail. I will show you some of the examples. Yes. So see, look at the examples. So we could see Right? We, were, we had a, a theoretical understanding or theoretical, uh, uh, theoretical uh, uh, proposals to tell about the formation of the stars and other objects. But Hubble was the first thing to show where the stars might have been born or might, might getting born and how the galaxies whether the galaxies are interacting, galaxies itself, they are a very, very huge system. And the planets, the Galilean planet, the Galileo was the one who saw the whole object. But through the Hubble, we saw more than 40 or more than that. So, the details on the surface of the Jupiter, right, were very much mind blowing. You can see the details and that could tell more about the atmosphere of the uh, Jupiter and also the Saturn ring and any other planet and not only the planet around the sun, right? The things which are not uh, thought about looking at the planets that probably might be existing going around the other star. Think about you are looking at, imagine you are looking at the night sky and how the stars look like. They look just like a dot, right? The stars and you, now you think about the sun which is the central part of our system and we go around the sun and sun is about 108 times bigger than earth in diameter. And if you, if you can imagine a ball of size, sun size, then it can hold about more than 30 million Earth inside the sun. sun. So sun is such a big object and if you look at the sun in the sky, it looks, it, it is a, a size of a, an, it, it looks like a disc to us and its whose size is about half a degree. But the star that you see in the night sky is looks like a dot. And we know that these dots are also similar to the sun. And if they are similar to the sun, and also they may also be of the similar size of the sun. If a sign sun size object, we see them as a dot in the sky. Think about the planets, the size of the planets that is going around the sun. So it will be much, much time, which may not be visible from the uh, from the earth. So those kind of systems were able to see 
to the Hubble telescope. And we could see that the, I, I, did, I did not show the stellar field where actually the initial years of optical telescopes people used to see. One can see about 5000 stars through a naked eye in a, a good seeing condition. Right? But if you, three, if you see the same sky through the telescope, it, the number of, tele, number of stars that you can see becomes many fold, becomes millions. So, when actually people thought that there is a millions of, a billion of, billions of stars, right, in our system what we call as a galaxy, later through the Hubble, we came to know that there are similar number of galaxies that is in the universe. So, this was only possible because of the Hubble. Next slide please. And look at the beauty of the objects. So, the, each of the objects tells you many physical mechanisms that is happening, which you may not be able to know, right? in detail, in such a detail from the earth based telescopes. So you can know what is the temperature of the uh, physical, I mean, what at, at those place, what is the uh, pressure, what is the composition, what is the material that is there and what, how actually they are interacting with each other so I will not take much of the time. So these beautiful objects it is available because of the other. So we could know about the birthplaces of the stars because of the Hubble. Next slide. <coughs> so you can see the difference between the observing through the different wavelengths here. And you have seen a couple of examples earlier also. So we will skip this. We will go to the next. So, importantly, the, if you summarize what actually the Hubble has told us, is it, it has given us the information about the weather patterns, dust storms, atmosphere of the various planets of our solar system. It discovers Plutonian moon, right? So, we thought Pluto as only one moon, right? Because of the Hubble, we came to know that there are much, much smaller moon going around the smallest object, I mean, which earlier we considered as a planet, which now we uh, grade it as a, as a dwarf planet. And Hubble discovered a farthest object in our solar system, right? So, it is named as 2014 MU because it was discovered in 2014. That is the most primitive because knowing them and knowing the composition of them, we may know the original composition of the solar system because the materials undergoes evolution, right? So you know those who have a gold rings, golden ring on your finger, may know that, that those gold are actually are produced in one of the supernova. They can't be made on the earth or it can't be made inside the sun. It can be it can be made only during the supernova explosion. So the golden ring, the gold that you have wearing is the remnant of supernova explosion. Right? So and one of the beautiful things uh, that uh, people uh, people of our age might have observed is the impact of the uh, broken pieces of shoemaker levy comet into the Jupiter. So it was actually shown live. It put it, right? So it was in 1992, uh, it was, uh, it, it probably the comet was broken into, but the broken pieces were discovered uh, in 1993 and it was looking at the trajectory, it was uh, it was known, it came to know that it will go and impact the Jupiter because it was going around the <coughs> Jupiter. So in 1994, 
arrangements were made to observe this impact. So you, people could see the live impact of the pieces of this comet impacting the Jupiter. So Hubble detected methane in the atmosphere of the exoplanet. Right? Methane, as you know, is one of the very, very important molecule which may indicate the presence of life. So methane was detected by Hubble. And uh, in 2004, it took an ultra deep field image that is in the at a small area of this may, may be lesser than the size of the moon in the full moon in the sky right in the in a small part of uh, part of the sky it could see about 10000 galaxies right in a small so think only if you can see 10000 galaxies in such a small area of the sky how many galaxies may be there in the entire universe Right? So even if we if we uh, share every one of us and our shares one galaxy each, then there will be much many many billions of galaxies that will be remaining. Right? So there are so many uh, galaxies that are filled in uh, are, are filled in. So that was came to know. Uh, because of the oven. Next one. And this is just a, this one. Discovering a, a runaway universe. This is distance, this refers to the Hubble's law. We could get Hubble's uh, What Hubble's law says? It tells that the universe is expanding. Right? The one of the renowned uh, astronomers, uh, Hubble. Right? So he actually showed that the universe is expanding by looking at the recessional velocity of the galaxy. So many more such uh, convincing evidences were given by Hubble. And also we came to know about the, how the galaxies grow and how actually they take different forms. That was known because of the Hubble. And we came to know about the dark matter that is also because of the Hubble. And now we know that the whatever that we see right through the elect all electromagnetic waves is just maybe three percent of the matter that exists the remaining 97 may be invisible universe so the black holes are not rare it is everywhere right it's most common yes. and the planets moons and other things and the birthplaces of the star depth of the stars how actually the star dies Galactic details, the mergers, how actually they take their, the structures of the galaxies changes and so on. And it could also look at the far away tiny objects in the Kuiper Belt, the outermost region of our solar system. And also it could tell about the evolution of the asteroid belt, the asteroid belt which is present between the Mars and the Jupiter because those have a, a primitive composition so understanding them may be very helpful in knowing the origin of the solar system. Next slide. The next one that I want to share with you is about our own uh, telescope that is AstroSat. AstroSat is an Indian observatory that was placed in uh, 2015 and mainly it was uh, it carried a telescope to uh, look at uh, connect the ultraviolet ray uh, radiation and many instruments which can detect X-rays. So there are many X-ray instruments and also a UVIT telescope that was there uh, on the exosat. Still exosat is working very well and it has made a, a very very significant and this was the in, sorry, this was India's first observatory in space. Next slide. So these are the few major discoveries that 
that are uh, that are uh, led by exosat observation. So, a gamma burst was detected in 2007. So, that actually showed that it is a formation of a black hole and many other things, right? So, if you are interested, maybe I can uh, provide you the link to this or maybe you can take the uh, slide itself and you can, if you go to the ISO exosat website, web page, you can get all these things. So, there are many new things that was discovered by uh, exosat. So, next one. Next. So, these are the images that we got through exosat. Yeah, coming to the, the more fascinated uh, telescope which took more than 30 years, 40 years to build. Right? So, it's a 6.5 meters telescope. The world was just 2.3 meters. It is three times bigger. Okay? So, 21 feet bigger uh, thing. So, uh, the instrument that it carried, it, it mainly it worked in infrared, that is the objective was to look at the more distance object, the, uh, the coldest object in the universe, where actually the planets can form are the, the first stars and the first galaxies that were born. Infrared is very well suitable for them because infrared can pass through the gas and the dust which is fed uh, in the space between the stars or the galaxies or so on. So it was mainly it is mainly worked in uh, work in uh, collecting the infrared layer. So let us go to the next slide. So you can see we have got the some of the initial images from the space, James Webb Space Telescope and looking at the, I am not uh, going through the details of the engineering part of the JWST if, and uh, the website which supported this, uh, the launch, from the launch to its execution, right, and the first light that it saw Right? You could see how well the website was built. Right? Every step was animated and you could see what is being done by JWST at every step. And it would tell or, and if you go through them, you will see that how difficult that was to make a, a such a big telescope and place it in the and you know that it is placed in a, a special region a special place which is called as a L3 point, Lagrangian. So, where actually it looks always away from the sun so that it does it uh, becomes blind because of the brilliance of the sun's light. So, it looks always away from the sun and continuously observes the universe and when you do that, when you connect the infrared radiation, it is a challenging to connect the radiation because the temperature of the detector should be very less than an, an normal room temperature that we have. Right? Maybe about 10 degrees or 20 degrees temperature that you maintain. But the sunlight, when it falls on an object, it can take it to a few hundreds of Kelvin. So, you have to cool down the telescope to such a level where it can detect the infrared and your instruments are not are cold enough to detect the infrared. So keeping the instruments cool is the major problem when you go to space. Because it's a, a light shining on the instrument can heat up the uh, heat up the device to a, a several hundred degrees Kelvin. So it is a major challenge and please look at the uh, engineering things and look at how the, uh, the large uh, steam 
like things that has been done to protect, to make it prove cooler. So the each screen, there are about four or five uh, shields that is there. Each shield is about a, a, a size of tennis court. So unfolding the, the that that size screen in after reaching the space again it is a, a one of the remarkable thing and people have succeeded in doing such a uh, thing. So being an engineering it should uh, motivate you and it should uh, encourage you to take up such a dream. So next slide. So you can see what are the things that you have. So most of the things you can get it on the web. So if we get interest, uh, you, if you are interested in knowing them, you can talk to me later also. So we can know about the atmosphere of the outer world, that is the planets around the other stars. Next slide. So look at the beauty. It took, it, those are the materials which may undergo right? A star formation. The stars may be bar getting warm in those regions, and all those white spots, right, may be the new warm stars. Okay? So, these kind of details we were not able to achieve in any of the previous telescopes, even with the space telescope. So, that we have now with this. So, the James Webb Space Telescope may help us to see the first star that might have formed or the first galaxies that might have formed in the early universe and also the various planets around a very distant star. Next slide. So you look at the look at the Jupiter also. Uh, I, I actually took, uh, took the image of the Saturn also that was there. So, it has also taken the image of the Saturn and we should compare it with the, any of the uh, image of the Saturn that was previously available and compare it with the uh, given by JWST. You will see the details how different it makes. So, the main objective of the JWST was as I said to look at the, the first stars and the first galaxies look at the things through infrared because infrared may be the only wavelength which can provide you such information. So I just took up three, picked up three uh, space telescopes and tried to tell how much information that we have about the universe and how, why it is only because of the space telescope. And if you go through the uh, engineering things, you will see that the facilities, these space telescopes are just the facilities, right? So, you can become a facility creator if you dream, if you have a dream to build such a thing. So, hope that one of you can uh, build much magnanimous uh, I mean, a much a beautiful telescope and magnanimous uh, this one in coming years. Thank you very much. Any questions, students? Please interact. Yeah, raise your hands. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, you were talking about why stars twinkle. Twinkle. Uh, why stars twinkle? Twinkle, okay. Yes, sir, uh, I just, you said it's because of the atmosphere of the Earth. Yes. And planets are also outside the atmosphere yes. of the Earth. Then why don't they twinkle? Because the distance. If you look at the object, the amount of light that enters through the this one, right, is much, much larger. Uh, that of the planets compared to the stars. So even though they undergo refraction, right, there is no change in the position of that. I mean, 
not more amount of light gets disturbed because of this. But the stars are very important objects. The light coming from them on is also very tiny. And because of that, the refraction that it undergoes will be much more ampli amplified. So, because of that, we see the star light gets sprinkled and not the planets. Sir, one question. Yes. Sir, so like uh, near very heavy objects, they say time gets slow down and down. Yes. Near black holes. Can you observe it with this telescope? Sir? Yes. So can you explain it? No, so actually it observation of uh, uh, time dilation, what we call as slowing down of time. Yes, sir. Right? So, because these, the images that you take are at an instant that they are taken, so, the images may not tell you about the, this time dilation, right? But actually what they tell you something, uh, other things like how actually the light gets bent around a heavier objects. For example, uh, the, the gravitation and bending of light, right? So, that can be seen what is called as a micro lensing. I don't have an image of micro lensing. For example, you can see that a single object can see being uh, there many uh, as a many objects and like multiple objects just because of the bending of light. So, so they black holes yeah, uh, and also um, it's very difficult to tell because uh, I mean to show an image of a time dilation, a black hole, if something goes around the black hole, I mean, for example, if you have seen the image of the first image of the black hole that the people have created by looking at the 20 years of observations that they have taken, if you just look at this, how the nature of the image that you see, right, you can see the back portion of the black hole, which has raised up. So, that is because of the gravity, right? So, unfortunately, I don't have any images. Uh, like, is it possible? I was asking, like, can you detect this actually time dilation? Time dilation, um, maybe indirectly you can, but uh, I don't think it is it's possible directly. I don't know. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Is it number? Yes, sir. Uh, students, can you please, can you all please settle down? If you have any questions, please ask, sir. If you don't have, then keep quiet and listen to the interactions. This is for your benefit. Please keep quiet. Any more questions? Please raise your hands. So please, um, feel free to interact. So I heard the way that you detect planets in these far away systems is by seeing how much light is knocked out yes. in the sky. Yeah. But you said these telescopes also detect exoplanets. So yes. Exoplanets are star, uh, planets without any stars or anything. So how does it do that? Actually, there are many ways of detecting the exoplanets. For example, if you are looking at a bright object and suddenly you see the variation in the brightness, right? So. What is the logical thing that you can uh, tell about that? Decrease in the intensity. That maybe there is something going in front of that which is blocking certain amount of light. So those are called as light curves. Looking at how the light varies, right? So you can tell about whether there is a, an object which is going around the earth. So <coughs> these objects also do does the same thing. They observe the uh, stars and this see is there any variation in their brightness. So by looking at the variation in the brightness uh, they could say whether there is an object which is going around and uh, and depending upon what is the variation in the brightness whether they can say that whether it is an, a planet or an another star in a binary system or a 
uh, multiple uh, system that they exist. So you can easily distinguish whether it is an another star going around the star or a fixed planet or going around the star. So it is possible. But then uh, these, I'm talking about exoplanets. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what. So exoplanets are similar. And so what are exoplanets? The planets which are going around the other stars. Right? The exoplanets, planets, initially were the, the objects which belong to our solar system. The planets, that is the objects which are going around the stars, right, in other systems, right, outside the solar system, they were called as the exoplanets. So, by looking at the stars, by looking at the variation of the light, you can find it. And also there are many methods like, you can do, uh, looking at the spectrum of the stars, you can know whether there is a, an other planets going around the stars. So there are many ways of detecting the planets. Sir, uh, my question is regarding the uh, asteroids and comets in Asia. So, uh, detecting them is, is it similar to how we detect, uh, like you, you talked about exoplanets and stars and planets? Is it similar to that, or uh, if it is different, how is it? Yeah, nice question. Actually, uh, earlier, people, well, how actually people used to do was they used to take a photograph of the sky, right, at different resolution. They used to see whether there is a new object that appeared in the frame. If there is a new object, they used to look at those areas for further observation and try to know whether it is a, a known object or a, a new object. And they used to find out the asteroids if by knowing the distance, right? So you could find out the distance some astronomical uh, way, techniques. So if by knowing them, you could tell them whether they are asteroids or not. Okay? Now, if you want to know how actually they are done, now earlier people used to do it in their backyard, taking a, putting a camera at the back of the telescope, taking a photograph and do it. Now, there are uh, uh, mechanized telescopes or robotic telescopes which takes a photograph of the entire sky and each of these frames, the images are scrutinized by the computer itself and the computer does looks at each of the images and detects a new object. So it is more automatically atomized now. So telescopes which are made for such a thing does uh, discover those kind of objects now. And if you are interested in doing yourself, there is a uh, an, uh, program that is available on the internet, freely available. It is called CLEA, CLEA, right? CLEA, CLEA stands for Contemporary Learning Exercise in Astronomy. It's a very, very good uh, exercise, a comfort uh, things that you can do. There are many exercises, astronomy exercises that you can do. One of them is finding out the answers. So, you can just check it out. One, oh, the only thing is, it can be, uh, it can, uh, it can work only on the older system because now they have the university which was supporting that has stopped uh, updating them for the new versions of Windows. So it works only uh, on the Windows maybe previous to XP or maybe 2000 or maybe you, you know how to make it work on a newer system. So, you can install it on your PC and you can work on it. So, that those are the very uh, good things to have a hands-on experience. How are the masters? Yes. Okay, I think for the time, limitation in time, we have to stop here. Uh, sir will be here with us. for this very informative talk. I also learned a lot of things and I hope our students have definitely gained a lot of uh, information. Yeah. Yeah, so just, just one thing I need to tell is feel free to come to planetarium if you are a space enthusiast or a astronomy enthusiast and 
there have been various many programs that is happening and one new program that is happening is uh, with the Raman Research Institute they are conducting a lecture series every once in a month right which is which brings out the light puts light on how engineering and technologies helps science to uh, innovate new things okay how actually the new instruments are built new techniques as resulted in discovering new science so those are very interesting talk look at our website taranaya.org for many such information and feel free to come over to planet area anytime you want thank you we have an astronomy club here at our school of computer science and the students uh, who are interested in astronomy i'm very sure you have joined or if you have not joined please join the club and you know anyway we have taken 200 students to planetarium one one you know go and they have uh, learned a lot of things from that uh, uh, show so thank you so much we have our uh, dean school of computer science dr sanjay ji i request him uh, for giving for giving a small memento from our side in Bangalore. It is being funded through personal funds of Accenture's managing director who is in US currently, Gopal Pigali. So he puts his own funds to develop this platform. It has been adopted by ICPD. The whole purpose of this uh, platform is to connect NGOs or non-government organizations working in various fields for those 17 SDGs to volunteers. Okay? And uh, through that platform we have got some sponsorship to teach environment for example, right? So environment is one of them. Uh, to school children, etc. they are given some coloring books which you can share, you know, all kinds of interesting activities. Okay? So because environment is part of this course, okay, we want you not just to do volunteering just like that, which is always welcome, but also do volunteering as part of this course. Okay? So we are assigning few marks to that, that especially Madam will announce. So what we expect you to is use this platform, contribute to environment, to the campaigns which run on that and you get two benefits. One is you get some points also on the platform. Those points can be encashed for various things, right? So people who kind of cross certain points, you get certificates uh, or you get some uh, uh, awards like some Amazon coupons or uh, meeting with CEO, like you know, you can have a half an hour session with the CEO of some good company, those kind of things. Very interesting, uh, innovative awards are there. Plus, of course, you get satisfaction and marks also. Okay. So, uh, 
I mentioned about uh, these development platforms as well as uh, CR. So I'll request uh, Sudanwa to talk about this platform more. So what we expect from you is to register on this platform. Registration is free. Just you have to give your email, phone numbers, etc. Right? So you can start using that. You can register for various campaigns and start contributing. As well as uh, you get those points awards also. So I'll request Sudanwa to give more details. And one specific campaign you will be participating in. Sudan Ma is our uh, senior, one year senior, third semester student. Uh, so, a lot of interest in the future of For example, recently we had uh, our, without, uh, our elections, right? So, last election we enrolled all our CSC students who are eligible into voters list, right? That's, that's the big campaign we did. That's really amazing. And I'm sure you can continue, and all of you also, those who are not registered yet, you know, will help you to register, etc. Right? So, he also works with blood donation and geo right? So, so what
If you face any problems by doing the same, please call me up. I'll help you out individually. Okay, a quick show of hands, how many of you were able to open this website? When it comes to uh, clicking, uh, when you have to do certain domain things, what you are good at? If you are good at content uh, writing and fundraising at the same time, you can choose multiple options. There is a checkbox for the same. Registration onto this platform is mandatory for all. It is a part of your exploring science course. And it carries weightage. Uh, yeah, there is marks associated with this. So please don't take this lightly. So I think uh, some of you would have completed also by now. How many have completed? Just raise your hand. Good, yeah. Raise fast, you can do in another 10 seconds. Like that's all you have to do. Just, it's a, just a registering on the website. Just a very critical, important data and that's it. So there will be one mandatory campaign, which is that uh, environmental uh, education. And the rest will be all optional. Whatever you want to do, you can do. on your personal side also, right? Maybe already part of some other uh, organizations, etc. Even that you can uh, report here because uh, this will give at an RVU level, right? How our students are doing, right? There is not that community survey has to do through this. It is just a reporting tool, okay? So that you can get credit certificates. You can do it through any organization. Yes. 